Handbells was awesome. Good morning. Would you join me? You will find it on the screen for our call to worship this morning. Sandy's going, all right, there we go. We come together this day drawn by the light of God's love. In God's eternal realm, peace and hope reign. Let all the people praise God with their deeds of loving kindness. Praise be to God. Amen. Good morning and welcome. We welcome all of those on Facebook who are watching today. All who have gathered is a big day in the life of our church. Um, we have our Telra um, charter school families that will be coming. But more importantly, we have an opportunity to be in mission today. Um, not very often do we get to be in mission right outside of the walls together as a congregation. We have teams of people that go to different places, but today we all get to go and be in mission. And even if you're at home and you're thinking, I'm not quite ready to, to get out and do this, your job at home is one, you can still come on and be here by 1130, or two, um, say a prayer and continue to pray throughout our time. Um, I'm glad um, to just take this, this moment. I, I want to share a scripture with you before we get into the rest of the service, and it comes from Acts. I'm going to take this down. From Acts chapter 16, and I'm just going to read a couple of verses. Verse 14 says, a certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us talking about Paul and Silas and the rest of the folks that had come and she was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. And the Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. And when she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. And I share this scripture with you today. Because if you, if, if you just went to your, and put in Lydia Acts, right, in your Google search engine, all kinds of things would come up. But one of the things that has always touched my heart, I guess, is from one woman to, to another, is when you look up about Lydia, when she accepted Christ, when Paul went to be with her and God led her, um, led him to her, you will read about her boldness of faith that she was very, very bold. She was a businesswoman, number one, so she probably kind of had to be bold to begin with. But when she accepted Christ and was baptized and her whole household was baptized and they all were filled with the Holy Spirit and accepted Christ, she began to preach to her community with great boldness. And that's what we are here to do today. When we go into mission, we may not look at someone and go, do you know Jesus? But we may look at them with our kindness and with our love and with our generosity and with our welcoming spirit that is very unique um, to St. Francis. They are going, the people who are coming today are going to feel the love of Jesus Christ. And we can do that with boldness. And we can proclaim that I'm here because of Jesus' love with boldness. And um, sometimes we're scared and we're timid. But if you look back in this series that we've done, Close and Far, Being in Mission, we learned that first week that we're to live out the attributes of God intentionally, whether we're at home, whether we're somewhere in the United States, whether we're in Costa Rica, wherever we are, that we live out our attributes. And we remember the vows that we've taken not just to our church, but to Christ, living it out in our church. And last week we prayed. Y'all remember that? We prayed, and I asked people at home to pray for their neighbors. I had a couple people go, I prayed for my neighbors. It's like, okay, next step. And we prayed over empty chairs. And we said, God, we know that you are doing something mighty and strong. We have prayed for God to prepare 
the people who need to be in our church, the people who may be here today, and other people. But what I'm saying is, is that we can go out today with a confidence and a boldness and a trust that God has brought us to this place. And God will take us to where God wants us to go. And I'm excited to see what happens with and how God works in that today. So continue to pray. Continue to listen to the call of God as we go to our Lord in prayer. God, we thank you for this day that has been coming for a long, long time. Like we've we've talked about Telra and the charter school for, for over a year. And it kind of feels like, ooh, is it really happening? But it is. And so I pray, Lord, that your anointing would pour over us who are gathered here, on those who are watching from home, on our grounds, that it will be a safe, fun, and exciting environment today. That we will bring honor to you. And more importantly, that as we look around, that we would not just feel your presence, but that we would truly experience what the kingdom of God should be like. We thank you for all that you have given to us and all that you will do in and through us. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Y'all will please stand as we gather together singing, Shall We Gather at the River, number 723 in your hymnal.
children to come up front. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Zayden, you want to hold my pumpkin? You want to hold the pumpkin? There we go. All right, here, sit, put it in the middle. All right, I brought my pumpkin again. We've, we've been talking about pumpkins a little bit. Now, I've got a question. How do pumpkins grow? Anybody know? What? From seeds. I'm so glad you said that. So a, a seed, right? And we plant it in the ground. And does one seed grow one pumpkin? <gasps> no. How many pumpkins do you think a seed grows? A whole bunch. A whole bunch. That's right. And you know what? I want to tell you a story. God gives us a seed, like a seed in our heart, and it's faith. Guess what? We're all born, and we can have the love of Jesus. And guess what? That seed can grow, and we can share it. That's how it, just like the pumpkins grow, we plant that seed, or God has planted it in our hearts, and then we get to go out and share that faith and that love. And kind of, we can think about it as growing pumpkins. Every time we share the love of Jesus and, and faith, it's like growing another pumpkin in our pumpkin patch. Because then they get to come into the family of God, right? And we're going to go and share a lot of faith and love this afternoon with all the people that are going to come to our church. And also we have a picnic all I want. I know, we're going to share, we're going to share food and we're going to share a lot of love with everybody. I my own one. Okay. All right, well, let's say a little prayer about sharing love, okay? Can y'all say, Dear God, Dear God, thank you. Thank you. For planting seeds, for planting seeds of love, of love, and faith in our hearts. And faith in our hearts. Help us, help us to go out, to go out, and grow your family. And grow your family. Amen. Amen. I'm going to divvy just a little bit from our from our bulletin for our prayers of the people today. I'm going to kind of change that up a little bit because um, we have a family that's going to be joining our church today. And I'm so excited that they, um, they love St. Francis and they want St. Francis to be their home. So I'm going to ask the Ogletrees to come up. And Callie's going to come with them. Um, she's in confirmation right now, so she'll be joining with her confirmands. But she's going to come and stand with her family today. I want you guys to come up and turn around and look at your church family that's here all in blue. We're all in blue today. Um, and we take these vows when we join the church, right? And we say, each of us say, I'm going to support my church through my prayers, my presence, my gifts, my service, and my witness. And so, um, but aside from that, aside from the vows, those are the vows that we're making to our church. Another vow has to take place before that, and that is that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And so I ask you, do you proclaim Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And will you support this church through your prayers, your gifts, your service, your witness, yeah. your presence? Yeah, I forgot that one. In your presence, yes, you will. And you already do. And so I say to the congregation, when someone joins the church, we have a responsibility I think sometimes we forget our responsibility because um, we just kind of go on with our, our, our day, our week, our life kind of a thing. But our responsibility is to take this family right here and put your big old arms around them and go, oop, you belong to us. And we're going to love you and we're going um, to celebrate when God uses your gifts and we're going to encourage God and, and support when God uses your gifts. And so there's two questions that I have for us as a congregation. If you're at home watching, you can, you can make this commitment too. Will you reaffirm the vows that you made to this church to support St. Francis through your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, say, I will. It's a really important vow. But you're going to be here. Um, not just for yourself, but for all of us as the body of Christ to come together. And secondly, will you welcome this family um, into our church family with all that you are and all that you have, if so say I will. We welcome you. 
as members of our church. We are so thankful that you guys are here. It's like you've been here forever. Um, and you just, this is like where God has led you and where you belong. So normally I would say to you all, come and welcome them and invite them. But we can do that outside. Because, um, you know, we got to do that outside. But um, you can welcome them as we leave. And I'm so thankful for your service, for your dedication. And I just want you to, to know, for me personally, not just as your pastor, but just as a woman, I am so thankful that you all, when I am in your presence, you make me want to be better. And, um, and I thank you for sharing your gifts, all the ways you have shared your gifts with me. Welcome to the family. Before, um, before the song sings, I'm going to kind of do um, the benediction, the song sings. Before y'all sing the song, uh, I'm nervous. Pam is in charge, and Pam and Michelle have worked so hard on this project. I really want you all to thank them personally for all that they have done to pull this off. Um, Pam has a lot of jobs that need to be done, and so when we are, when we finish, when the song finishes, and we exit, because what we're singing is what we believe, and we're going to take what we believe out into, out into our property outside of these walls today. Um, but Pam, you're going to be where? You're going to be in the hallway. And you're going to have a notebook, and there's other people who are in charge of other areas, and she's going to just send you and go, go help them, go help them, go help them, go help them, and we'll just go and go. And people should start arriving around 1130, and, um, and we'll be Jesus. How about that? So for now, let's stand and let's sing out loud what it is that we believe. In this time of desperation When all we know is doubt and fear There is only one foundation We believe We believe In this broken generation Let the lost be 
Yes, absolutely. Gwen is leading the way. Let's take the spirit of Christ into the world. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.